Hi, MG. I've had a sort of okay -ish day. I was up at 4.30 this morning. And because I couldn't see. So I got up. And what did I see to my horror? Oh, no. I'm thinking, no, we can't be. So about half six. I then come on my laptop and set my live footing out. And then I went back to bed for a couple of hours. I thought, there's no way I can get through today if I don't go back to bed for a couple of hours. I went back to bed. My two cats were on the bed, fast asleep. Poor you little flippers. You two woke me up. That's why I couldn't sleep at half four. Then I get up. And they bugger off back to bed. I'm sure they do it so they get the bed to themselves. Wow. I don't either. But like they say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. But I think that might be Chris's way of thinking because <coughs> the past couple of days <coughs> pardon me sorry past couple of days quite a bit of information has been coming out such as the crazies the crazy people and then he's got his PIs so they're probably thinking well if we get in with Seth, we'll find out what's going on. And I've noticed something with Chris. He likes to push his way into any investigation that's going on. Like the time with Narc Divers and I was on the phone. And he said, oh, I'm the guy to come to. I know everything you need to know. The police town phone phone us every day, they took us on a drive around, you know what I mean? So I think it's more Chris wanting to see what Seth has got, but I may not like it, but I will stand by it. I will not change my opinion on it though, on CP and KP, that's my opinion. And no one can stop me from doing that. I'll always be here to support Sebastian. Because isn't this something we wanted from day one, really? KP, CP and Seth to all work together. That's something we've all wanted from the beginning. It just seems a bit odd. And then he says to, apparently he said he couldn't go to the vigil last night. Stay at the vigil. Because they had to go out somewhere. Yeah, a bike shop, a motorbike shop. Good one. That's showing a bit of commitment, isn't it? I'd love to get eight and a half hours sleep, though. I'm lucky. I fall asleep. I go to bed normally about half ten, eleven o'clock ish. Depends on when I get off here. I get off here about o'clock it's about 11 o'clock i go to bed and um i fall asleep asleep because of the medication i'm on but it, it doesn't help me stay asleep right and i wake up after about an hour or two toss and turn then i go back to sleep then i toss and turn again some nights i stay in bed all night never doubt i'm up like this morning at half four I don't because of my medication, I don't normally get up till about half nine, ten o'clock. Any time before that, I know I'm like a zombie. I really am. And then it takes me like two hours, two hours to get motivated. In those two hours, I have about several cups of coffee, shower, 
and everything. If I'm going out, I get dressed. If I'm not, I'll just put on some fresh pyjamas. And then that's me for the day. And it's like about three, three, four o'clock in the afternoon. I think, okay, I best do some housework. And it can take me right up until seven o'clock, half seven. To do all that, plus do what I've got to do for ready to get my life ready for on the night time. So, how's your weekend all going, everyone? Hope you're having a lovely weekend. Hope you've had nice sunny weather. We've had a bit of sun. But we're in Scotland, so we can get all all seasons in one day. In the UK, you can get rain, snow, sleep, gale force winds, sunshine, heat waves, all in one flipping day. You never know what you're going to get up in, in the UK, you don't, and especially Scotland. So, anyway, we're going to talk about what happened yesterday, but we're also going to look at the Narc Divers team. The guy who goes out on the bike on his boat. And if he has to, he'll go and dive. And um, there's two videos, one from yesterday and there's one from today. But I'm just going to have a quick look at the one from yesterday. Because I love watching how their, the cameras are used for underwater, the sonar. I think that's just amazing how they get and how they pick images up off it. I used to like watch, um, what was that? Uh, oh God, it was um, a group. Oh God. Them at purpose. The lead that was uh, charged with sexual assault charges or something like that. And um, I used to watch all of them until I found out about those charges from, did I click off from him? I went, yeah, no, don't care if he's doing good work or not. No, it doesn't sit right with me. You know what I mean? So, my two cats I'm going to fucking kill. Pack it in. Right, they're worse than kids, my cats are. They really are. At least you can separate your children, put one, one end of the room and one the other end of the room. You can't with the cats. You can't separate them. How's your mum anyway, MG? Hope she's okay. Anyway. Now let's do I will talk about what happened last night and I'm going to show you the visual first. Bye. Visual. I've the visual. No, obviously not. So, yeah, Justin on TikTok was asked to do the visual, the video it. <clears throat> yeah. 
I'll speed it up a little bit because it's like dated two minutes long. Right, so I oh, yeah. just gotta do the settings on it. Um We are here today to petition God to hear our prayer, hear our cry. This is the vigil for Sebastian Rogers. To his parents, to his family. So in every heart towards God, head bowed. Thank you for Lord, we thank you, God, that you the have vigil for Sebastian Rogers at Beach High School in Henderson, Lord, Tennessee. We just glorify you and we honor you on today. For there is none like you, God. You are heaven and you are earth. You are the beginning. No, they have not and found him. That's why they're doing a vigil. You are our savior. You are we go to and thank you. And God, today we need you, Lord. We need you. To be you, very God. frank with you, I'll, um, I'll drop it to you for you. Chris Crowfoot was God here earlier, and I'm not going to share what happened God, now. Lord, it's not a very big update involving Chris Crowfoot here very soon. The only thing that annoyed me about this was. Video this and stream it, yeah. But it talks in and out, it'll, it'll talk over what's going on. I'm thinking, hold on, you just said your video, it don't talk over it, we can't hear what they're saying. You know what I mean? So, it's a bit annoying. Oh
Well, it, it's not that they want me to use him. It was, I don't want to say it was Lanet, but he called me yesterday about it and I had to get approval. And unfortunately, a lot of it talked about the purpose of that visual. So it's been kind of hard to get the word out, unfortunately. I believe that, that a lot of Sebastians agreed for Sebastian let them about the vigils. That, I, I can't understand why they wouldn't let him do that. No, they've not found him. I, I have no idea why. I said Chris was here, and there will be a big announcement about why he was here and why he's no longer here at the moment. Uh, um, but it's going to be a very interesting update and one that I was not expecting to talk about. But Seth gave me permission to talk to you. Keep on spamming green hearts. Red, uh, green is the favorite color of Sebastian. That's why he's wearing green. Whether it's the green balloons, green tables, everybody's wearing green and rhythm. <coughs> no. It's a shame that the world wasn't got nipped uh, because there's a handful of people there, and that's a shame. You know what I mean? I know I posted it as soon as I heard about it, I posted it on my Facebook page. And I believe it was on my Twitter account. And everyone else was posting it on their Facebook pages and their Instagrams and their Twitter accounts. But it all depends who follows you. You know what I mean? And if they share it as well. If they don't share it, then it's not fantasy. Neither, neither are the crowd, but they're here. Later tonight, I'll probably be on YouTube talking about how I'll try to get between this and that. I'll go past this. See, there's a song to sing. There's a song. Oh, believe me, I'm just as anxious to share. Students in their efforts on Wednesday to wear green for Sebastian. 
I'm extremely proud of those students for stepping up and taking the lead with that um, to spread awareness. Um, and like I said, I, I'm not going to stop spreading awareness. I'm going to do my part, whatever that is, to help try to find these teams to come home. Uh, you know, it's something we all have in common. I'm telling you now, I don't know what the decision, reason behind this decision was, but I can't see Seth standing there and letting Chris and Katie lie like they have. Not while he's there. Love this song.
this is the video version that brought <laughs> That is Sebastian's song. That is. That's good. Because I want to get the mid test where I set to. He is. God, I believe that heart and mind reveal to every single person. Hey, bitches, I get to share this recent time with you. What's going on with that? Adorable. That's amazing. Thank you for all the support. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I appreciate everybody's support. Please, people, please keep me sending your thoughts and prayers. Appreciate it. Thank you. His mama wants him back. I want him back. Tick tock, thanks. 
I'll share his po poster. You can pull up his poster off anywhere. <coughs> you can you can pull his poster off pretty much anywhere. Share it on your social media. Right? I can believe that. To tell them to talk. The mother was the last one to be with him. She knows what happened. Either something I or something out. 10, 9 p.m. Sunday and 6 a.m. Monday. She knows something happened. If it was an accident, just say so. Let her know where he is. If you don't know where he is, get the person you handed him over to because I think there was a handoff. Right? I really do. Get that person to tell you where he is so you can tell Seth. Right? And until I see a different behaviour, right, I will stick by my opinions. I will still support Sebastian. I will still support Seth. But I don't need to support Chris and Katie. I don't. Because my opinion is, she was, I don't even know if Chris is involved. It's all twists and turns and God knows. But I'm going to show you. Would it be on this one again? Uh, a lot of people took offence to this last night, right? I can see where they're coming from. I'm just going to skip to where. Right section to where he talks about. Probably be on. He'll possibly be on tomorrow. Um, uh, we'll get into a sec in a second. While while it may be him, it may not may not. Um, because I do have a really awesome whatever it's going to be. It's going to be pretty awesome. Hey everybody, it's Jordan. 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 I'll share his poster. You can pull up his poster off anywhere. And what I'll tell you that you can't tell because he's wearing glasses is that he was literally in tears when he. Yeah. All right now. Just there. I took this picture. There is Chris Proudfoot talking to Seth Rogers. And I've seen a lot of the comments in this chat I was, as, as I was waiting for this live to start and in my video uh, on TikTok and on here on YouTube that I've done. And I think a lot of y'all are misunderstanding what's going on here. So we're going to break that down for y'all tonight. I think a lot of y'all are misunderstanding the comments that Seth made. Seth has his own way of speaking. Um, I thought when we recorded it, it was good. Perhaps the wording could have been a little bit different based on what I'm seeing and the way it's being interpreted. But we're going to get into that a little bit more. So first, I know that a lot of y'all are like, what's he talking about? What's, you know, what's this video that he's referring to? So I'm gonna show y'all a couple things. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the video that, that's in question where he's allegedly telling everybody to F off. And I mean, he is, but it's not in the way, the way that y'all think. And we'll explain that. And then the next thing I'm gonna show you after that, after we talk about that is what he said at the end of the vigil, which by the way, the entire vigil for those of y'all who are interested in watching it uh, is on YouTube as well on my channel. It's been uploaded. You can. Go check it out. Yes, I've got so the link on my description on that, for that. Pull this up and let y'all just, you know, give it a listen. Me and Chris are putting our differences aside. It's not about our egos. It's about finding Sebastian. Me, Chris, and Katie. And put your egos aside. Help us find our son. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers is the goal of this shit. If you can't get on that, get the fuck off. All right. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of people took offense at that because they thought 
Old John, we've been here by your side from day one. We've been supporting you. We've been helping you. We've been making donations. You know what I mean? We stuck up for you. Everything. And now you're telling us to F off? No. Yes, team, CP and KP are putting their differences aside. And as before, there's plenty of time once we get Sebastian home. There's plenty of time after that to play, do the guilt, uh, the blind game. Who's to blame? Right? And as I say, but I can understand where it's coming from. And what he was saying is, if you can't get on the train where the Sebastian Rogers train, then F off. If you can't... Uh, perhaps find Sebastian without having all these deceitful tacks back and forth. Then you don't need to be there, right? As the mother, his mother said once at the vigil, if you want to come and help and search, come and help and search, but don't come with your uh, phones or your video recorders and have it filmed to go live, to make money out of this. Now, I thought the other night, I was watching some, it was on a Facebook page, and I didn't agree with this because this guy is making money out of this. He had um, another interview, Surviving the Survivor, right? I've seen his podcast before, his life's very good. But this one, he put on his Patreon page. So to see it live, you had to join, which is a certain amount of money, don't know how much they charge, right, to see this live. And I thought, hold oh, on, if you've got 10,000 people who want to see this, 10,000 people could sign up to your Patreon just to get that. That's 10,000, say it's four, $4. Just say, for instance, it's $4 to sign up. And you've got 1,000 people. Sign up. That's four thousand dollars he just made, right? Just so they could see that video with him and the other guy and the private investigator talking. I thought, no, you just made a lot of money out of that. You making money out of Sebastian, and that shouldn't be how it is. I don't believe in that. If I was my, if I was at the point, right, where I I was my Right? I wouldn't have none of my videos for Sebastian monetized. None. None of them. I don't believe in it. I think once, say, we got Sebastian home, and then we're looking at what actually happened, then I'd start monetizing it. But not while I was looking for him, I wouldn't monetize him. Or if I did monetize it, I'd make every payment that I had that evening for that live and donate it to, right? Each month then, I'd tally it up and donate it to Seth. Because I don't believe in making money off, but that guy had it on Patreon. And I don't, I, I'd have to have a look now to see how much his Patreon is. But I thought, that's not right. People need, have got to pay for that. Do you see this? No, that's wrong. You're making money off Sebastian. So, it's like the grandmother's... If you can't come on a search and leave your camera at home, then don't bother. Don't come. And this is what Seth is saying. If you can't put your differences to one side, right, and help find Sebastian with him, Kate, P, then don't. Don't bother. 
right? And I fully agree with him. Reasons why he's done this, I don't know. I think it's more from CP's side. Perhaps he thinks because Seth's got a private investigator, they might be able to get some information off there. I've noticed with CP, he does... If he thinks someone's got some information about something, he'll push himself into that investigation. Like knocked divers the other week with the phone call. We all heard it saying, oh, I was giving the uh, police drive around on the day. Sebastian went missing. The police took me on a drive around over to the uh, uh, pond and all that. I'm the one who knows what's, where to go how, and all this lot. I'm the guy to come to. And I thought, you're pushing yourself in on this investigation here. Is he doing the same thing with the law enforcement? Is he pushing himself in on the law enforcement investigation? Because that's a big red flag. When someone's pushing themselves into a search, right, and making out they're the ones to turn to, it's like, hmm, really? What is it you know that we don't know then? Right? And it's a big red flag. And I think C uh, CP's saying, look, let's... Because apparently, I, I heard, I don't know how true it was, that there was a bit of shouting going on at first between CP and Seth. Right? But then Seth quieting down because he's obviously thought, you know what, I'm not going to get anywhere here with this shouting. I'll just shut up a minute. And because of that, then, CP went quiet and they started talking level-headed. So I think um, CP is the one who's pushing himself into this. He wants to know what Seth knows. So Seth, if you're watching this, if you get to hear this, keep your guard up, please. Please. I'm not saying I don't work with them. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, just watch what you're saying to them. Or watch what you're telling them, like where you're going to look or where you're going to put post flyers out and all this lot. Just watch yourself. Right? Because the thing is, Seth, even though searches are still going on, Seth isn't telling anyone where these searches are happening. Right? He's telling his main group of people where to meet up, but he's not putting it out there publicly. So no one can follow them around. So they don't know what Seth is up to no more. He's got a PI. In fact, he's got two. I don't agree with her, his PI going on YouTube channels because PI is, means private investigator. What part of private investigator does she not understand? Because in my eyes, if I had a private investigator and I was paying them, I would not want them on a YouTube channel. No way. No way would I want them on any YouTube channel or any TikToks or any Facebook pages discussing this case. I would say, report everything you have back to me and then I will decide what people needed to know and what they didn't need to know. She's the private investigator. She's hired by Seth. She needs to keep off YouTube. I know she's only gone on the one channel so far, to my knowledge. So, hold on, hold on. Right, she's only been on the one YouTube channel so far that I know of, but it's not the point. Right, so um, she needs to stay off YouTube. 
and not discuss anything about this case. Sorry, Steph, if you're listening, if you get to hear this, I'm sorry, but that's just my feelings, that's my opinions. Right? <coughs> because who who else is watching all these uh, YouTube channels, Seth? CP and KP. Who else is going on all these Facebook pages? CP and KP. They know exactly what's going on. So it's like people have gone on the pages to go and they're going, oh, wow. It's just so much similar to what I've just said, mm -hmm. right? And I've only said it now because it's out there for everyone to read, right? And they say, oh, well, I think CP is trying to get information out of Seth and like, Seth could be trying to get information. You're giving away the game plan. You gave away the game plan. So what the hell are you doing? You should None of this should be discussed on any Facebook page. Okay, it's the fact that you may not like the decision. The decision but don't give away possible game plans. But I've done it now because it's already out there. If no one had said this on Facebook pages and other YouTube pages, I wouldn't have said anything. Right? But I will still firmly believe in Seth. A lot of people are saying they don't want anything else to do with this case. Well, obviously, if you that, if that is how you feel, you didn't have a good intention of this in the first place, then did you? Because you can't just drop a case that you've probably invested hours and hours. I know I spend, what, two, three hours a day just checking all the Facebook pages, all my Twitter accounts, my Instagrams, my TikToks, um, going through the internet, the news reels, and all that. And then I'm doing my lives. So I spent hours a day doing this. So if you if you're doing that, then you couldn't have been that invested in finding Sebastian. If you are truly just going to drop Seth, because he's now made that decision to work with CP and KP. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. That's all I say, right? And for Seth, I really do hope. You find we find your son, and I hope we find him alive. And I hope all these crazies that are coming out, there'll there be more. There'll be more coming out. One's come out already, there'll be another one. Right? You always get them on these cases. After a while, you'll get these crazies coming out there. I know where your son is. Like, you've got all these psychics. Right? There's only one psychic I trust. And that's Reverend Serafina, Donna Serafina, or something like that, or Ser whatever. Because, yes, she's got um, a YouTube channel, but she don't openly say, I know where he is. Right? I know where he is. Well, I'm sorry. If you're a psychic and you know where he is, then tell law enforcement. Tell them. You know what I mean? It's like, I was watching a YouTube channel. Who was it? T-Rev. And a psychic come through saying, uh, apparently, like, she knew where he was, but she couldn't get there because she lived and she needed to get a flight and all this lot. And T-Rev said, if you know where he is, I'll book your flight for you. I will book you a flight down to Tennessee. I will meet you in Tennessee. I'll book you up to Tennessee so that you can show them where he is. You know what? She didn't take him up on his offer. But the one I, I trust him, she said, oh, I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. She's been looking into the Summer Wells case. She's been doing it now for about a year or two. She's not once said where she is. 
Not once. She go back look like when the way she explains it is she sees it in picture form sort of thing and word one word would mean a lake, a building, a park, a town, a shop. You know what I mean? It could mean anything. And so when she's telling us these details, it's not just that those details could apply anywhere in the USA. Anywhere. So she's not actually said she knows where some Marie is. She just sees these pictures coming like either like a barrel and um, a road sign. But there's some that did come in, which I thought was very interesting on the Summer Moon Wales case. And I'll discuss that on another case time, not today. And, but I believe, I trust Seth. He's not stupid. He's coming up to two, two months now. Two months. Right? And all he's had to do for the whole two months is fight against is having to look for his son why because he's getting no information off at tb tbi or law enforcement so he's out there with his two friends one friend who works so he can only come out on certain days i suppose right and um he's out there looking he's getting no help off law enforcement no help off tbi uh, is getting blackmailed by CP, right? Saying if I told the everyone about your son, no one would want to look for him. So CP beat uh, Seth beat him to it and told him what he said and called him out on it. And I'll tell you now, actions speak louder than words, right? So over the next week, two weeks, there's another vigil apparently in two weeks' time. Word is they are supposed to be coming to that one. We will see. Or will I go to another motorbike shop? Hmm. Because that's their thing. They like to go to motorbike shops and look at motorbikes. Like they did last night. Right now, KP might say, but she's she she's scared to go to these vigils because of what people people have a backlash on her. That's because of your own actions, love. Your own actions. Actions. Every action you do has a consequence, and you've shown nothing. You've shown no remorse. You've not shed a tear. But then again, you might do it in private, because some people do. They don't do it on camera, they do it in private. So we can't really say that. Um, but her actions, like who on earth leaves their family home to live in a five-wheeler, right? And those parked up right by the entrance, right? How safe are you there, love? You're a lot safer in your home than you are in a five-wheeler parked right up by the entrance where anyone can walk past and come up to your windows and tap your windows and whatever. A lot safer at home. Because at home you've got people with ring doorbells who would get the car on their ring doorbell. Or people coming to, up to your house, they see it all on their home security cameras and on their ring doorbells. So you're a lot safer at home than you are on a five-wheeler. Alright, so... That's just me. I don't know. It's, I'm just going to wait to see what happens because, as I said, actions speak louder than words. If they start to help with the search, 
If they start going out there, putting flyers out there, actually getting off their backsides and getting out there and sticking flyers to every post and every lamp post, every billboard, you name it, then my opinion of them would still be she had something to do with it or she knows something. Because a child does not just go and walk out of the house and poof, gone. Without a sign or a trace or anything. It's not going to happen. It's not. And as for that dog scent, no, I don't trust that anyway because that could have been from the guy before or a couple of guys before. So I'm not taking much into that dog scent. I'm really not. So, what does everyone think? Come on, you're on YouTube. Tell us what you think. Come in the chat and give us your views, your opinions. So, it's, I don't know, it's just, I just feel sad for Sebastian. Do you know, I was watching a program the other night, it was on YouTube, and it was discussing um, decomposition of a body. No, I know, but that's not my sort of thing. Give me blood and guts and all that lot on there. Give me a dog dying in the road. No, I can't, I can't watch. You know what I mean? Anyway, they're talking about decomposition and how it works and, and I'm thinking, you know what? And how it works with the... Uh, maggots and the blowflies and how the maggots oh god it was just horrendous i'm and i sat there and i'm thinking normally this wouldn't bother me this would not bother me watching this program about decomposition right because that's all i watch all day on youtube is crime crime fbi files and all that lot yeah and the real CSIs, you name it, I watch it all. So, and you know what I kept thinking? I kept, kept thinking about Sebastian. Lying there, if he is out there, and he's not with us no more, just lying there being... mauled by these little creatures. And it just, I just couldn't, it was horrendous what I was listening to. But it just got to me that I thought, I can't watch this today. And I had to turn that off. Any other time I've been, yeah, in my high tops. Right? I'm actually going to get a sweatshirt, something to do about crime. Written on the front. What was it? I put a t-shirt up the other day uh, on my Facebook page. Where is he? I'll show it yeah. you. Right, this. Just a gal who loves murder podcasts. That's me. I'm the one who falls asleep listening to. Okay, the only dramas I listen to. I don't listen to no real crime stories right i listen to my drama programs like i don't know they're quite old you don't get many dramas now guys where it involves <coughs> police and murders <coughs> <coughs> so i tend to fall asleep listening to them and i wake up and if it's still on i'm listening to it again <coughs> But that's me. I just love my murder podcasts. I've been known to 
get on a bus and have my earphones in or my headphones on listening to something on my phone. <coughs> and all I can say is a good job my earpiece, my headphones are noise cancelling. <coughs> but I remember once I took my headphones off and I just rested them over my shoulders, over the back of my neck. And I could still hear it. And actually, I'm going to do that now because it's hurting my ears. And I forgot I was listening to a podcast. <laughs> and I took them off because I was getting on a bus and I needed to talk to the driver. So I put them off and put them around my shoulders. I got on the bus, right, walked up the bus and I've walked to the, near, near the back of the bus. And I've sat down. I hadn't realised my headphones were still around my neck. And the podcast was still on. Yeah. What these people must have thought as I walked past and I could hear like, like someone going on about uh, noise and the amount of blood that was lost and how many bullets was in a body. And all this that I'm thinking, oh shit. So I've had to put my headphones back on. Right? But then I thought, no, I don't want to listen to it at the moment, I'm on the bus. So I've turned it off and turned my headphones off. But it's so easily done when you're just walking around with your headphones on or earpieces in. And you just pop them out while you're going to a shop or something to pay for something. <laughs> so, but that's me. Just get who loves murder podcast have done for years have done for years and i remember when csi programs first started coming out on the tv csi las vegas vegas whatever i know it was only drama right but i was well and truly into that and if anyone come knocking on my door at nine o'clock when that came on it was like i'll kill them I'm going to kill them. How dare they interrupt my evening of CSI? Right? So I had to tell friends, neighbours, do not knock on my door on these, on these certain nights after nine o'clock. Because you're likely to get a mouthful off me. Right? So, and then there's another guy who lived across the road, and he loved all these crime podcast, uh, crime dramas and all this like and i said if you're into crime watch csi's i know it's only drama and it's all not like the real thing but i'm sure you like it and you know he did and i used to watch them all csi vegas one csi new york csi um <coughs> what was the other one oh god I can't think of the other one was CSI one. Yeah, Las Vegas, New York, Miami. Right. And I used to watch them all religiously. I've even got New York ones on DVD. And I watched them all one night, in a night, a whole set of them. So... Anything to do with crime. So, yeah, that's why I watch a load, watch on YouTube, because you get a lot of the live police talks, not dramas. It's actual cases and how they dealt with them. So, yeah. yeah. But let's have a look. For that. Mm -hmm. This is... Look at me. This photo here. It looks like, okay, Steph is leaning back against the car door. He couldn't get any further back if he wanted to. He couldn't. But that stance is like saying, I'm warning. It's like he's leaning into him. It's like, I'm warning you now. Right? Sort of thing. Whether he's saying that, I don't know. I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall. 
flying around them two at that time to hear what he said. But we're never going to know. The only way we will know what was said is if CP pisses Seth off again. Right? If CP and KP carry on their flipping lies and pisses Seth off again, he will flip again. And all will come out. So really, CP, you don't want to piss Seth off no more. You don't. Because he flipped last time when you tried to blackmail him over Sebastian. Right? And he told you then, you push, pissed me off too, once too often, I warned you. And he's doing it again. He's warning you. He'll tell you now. Don't piss him off, CP, because you lie again. This is why he won't do interviews with them. Because he won't sit in a room or on a alive, doing an interview, knowing now they're on their laptops or computers or whatever, he's on his laptop or whatever, and he's sitting there having to listen to their lies, and have them mock uh, Sebastian, and put him down at every chance they can. As a mother, if, it was, if I was the father, and and the mother and I was separated. And I sat on a YouTube channel and I had to listen to that. I'd, li I'd have to come off. I'd have to disconnect from the uh, live because it would be either that, disconnect from the live, or call them out there and then on their lives. Because Seth will not take it. That's why he won't do any lives with them, because of the lies. But Seth doesn't have to do no more lives. He's doing one with um, Peter Hyatt. Uh, I come in near the end, and he was just listening most of it. Peter Hyatt is very good, but... This interview come after he just done this. After all this, who are come out about him, him, CP and KP were working together. So it's like, hmm, does he really want to sit there and hear people having a go about his ex wife and CP? After he's just said he's going to work with them to find Sebastian. I don't think he does. Well, I don't think CP and KP will be doing any more lives. They're a lawyer. They've got a lot, especially CP, he's got a lawyer because he's not done no lives. KP has. He done one the other week. CP wasn't there. Or was he? Or was he? We don't know. He may have been there, but off camera. No. Um, she, she was reading from her notes. But like someone said, when you sometimes when you're doing an interview, the interview app will give you the list of the questions it's gonna be asking you so that you can answer them truthfully and knowingly. Right? So she's probably written down the answers what she needed to say for each question. And to be honest, I'd be the same. Or I'd have notes written down. Don't forget to mention this. Or, don't forget to say this to them and things like that. So having notes written down doesn't mean nothing to me. But that was a foot. Oh, God, my leg is so, so itchy. But so, I'm not sure if my ankle is itchy or sore. Or if it's just thing over ending. But it's doing my flipping head in today. Constant pain in my, onto my ankle. But um, if that was the first time she's doing an interview on her own. Right. So, and as for CP passing the lie detector and KP passing the lie detector, we will never know if that is true or not. Because law enforcement won't say so. 
The only way we'll know is if the law enforcement has come out and said, Chris Proud uh, Feet, or Stinky Feet as some people call him, and KP, I'm not being investigated into the case of Sebastian. I've got no connection. If the law enforcement actually come out and say something to those words, then you've got to believe law enforcement, or should we? Because the rumours going around about how he's got connections with law enforcement, and that comment he made in that one interview, I didn't expect it to explode, or like this. He was expecting the police to come in, take their word for the fact that Sebastian had walked down them walked out that front door and walked away. Even though he had no shoes on, no jacket on, no phone, no money, no bag with any snacks in, nothing, not even a switch, and no scent for the trail, no trail for the dogs. Uh, oh, just a pocket torch. And that's what they was expecting the police to believe them. But when he got moved up to an Amber Alert, no, they couldn't ignore that then, because something wasn't right. Now, they do say they have to have good reasons behind putting as an Amber Alert, like there's a, it's an abduction or something like that. Now, they've got no evidence to say he was abducted. They've got no evidence to say there was a foul play. So why is it an Amber Alert? I don't get that. Amber Alerts are for children who are in imminent danger. Yes, Sebastian is in, is in imminent danger, I believe. I meant to have a look at that today. But I had other things I had to do. And other reasons. But they have to have they have to cover a certain criteria before it can be raised from an endangered to an amber. Which obviously it did. So obviously after the first day with no trial of scent, nothing else, right? They thought something isn't right here. This lad has not just walked off. And I think that's why they put it up to an Amber Alert. I think they was thinking perhaps someone had come in during the night, had took him and took him out of the house while the mother was sleeping. But then there's no camera. Someone had come in that house, the doorbell across the road, we're just seeing light coming from that house or some movement coming from that house. Right? They just, it would have picked up something. I'm sure it would have. I don't care how dark it was. It would have picked up something. So, did the police, do the police feel like someone's come and abducted him? We don't know. So, anyway, we're going to watch. Oh no, can we go back to Facebook? We're going to watch some of this, okay? It's not driver, divers. And he's out on a lake on his boat with another person with him. And they are searching up and down. I like watching these because it shows you the screen.
Jesus is vibrating. Uh, hit the, not your side but my side the first one yep I did that and then the third one yep that way we got lice